Pluto is not a planet. That doesn't count. That's 72 times larger than the expected average moon to planet ratio of our solar system. Moons are just not supposed to be this big relative to their home planet, but sure, maybe we got lucky. Despite this, the moon is only 1% of Earth's mass. 1% meaning it is way lighter than it's expected to be, and we really don't even know why. Unless, of course, the moon is either extremely porous, like a sponge, or a hollow shell. When looking at this data, NASA's own Dr. Gordon McDonald even said himself, it would seem that the moon is more like a hollow than a homogenous sphere. But oh, that's just the tip, and we ain't stopping. All right, more moon pseudoscience. This guy's giving us what we call a gish gallop of nonsense. He's just rapid firing, throwing out stuff, trying to hope that if you pile it up high enough, it will turn into something real. But if you, you know, zoom in on each one of the things that he, it say, he's saying, it doesn't, either it is just like a coincidence or it doesn't really, doesn't really hold up. So I wanted to address a couple, of, a couple of things that we showed there. One is this idea that the moon is so much lighter than the Earth that we need to hypothesize something akin to it being hollow in order to explain that. So first of all, he fudged the numbers a little bit there. The... He says that the moon is 25% the size of the Earth. That's kind of a vague term to use. The, the, the specific property that we're interested in is volume, right? The moon is 1.2, 1.3% the volume of the Earth and about 1% the mass of the Earth. So it's a little bit less dense overall than the Earth is. This is not a mystery. The Earth is bigger than the moon, Therefore, it has more gravity, you know, compressing things, squeezing things down. It has more iron at its core, and overall it's denser because it's being crushed down more by Earth's greater gravity. So, of course, the moon is less dense than the Earth. That's exactly what we would expect. So that makes, and the numbers all line up nicely. It makes perfect sense. There's no mystery. And no, the Earth, the moon absolutely could not be hollow. It has way too much mass to, you know, to be hollow. Again, it's just a little bit less dense than the Earth. Um, so that one completely falls apart when you, when you, you know, do a deep dive on the actual numbers. He then goes on to talk about, and I've heard this from many people as well, that you know the moon quote unquote rang like a bell when you smack something into it. And there have been other instances where he's not even you know referring to where we have deliberately smashed satellites into the moon in order to measure the resulting seismic waves because we can use that to learn about some of the interior structure of the moon. So you know a solid object like the Earth or like the moon absolutely would ring even without being hollow. Not only hollow objects vibrate, you know, when they are struck. Uh, And so that, you know, the fact that that the moon continued to vibrate for days after being struck does not imply or require that it be hollow. And in fact, those very experiments prove the moon is not hollow. If you look into that, up that data, up, you know, those, those, those studies, they, you know, showed us you know, some details about the interior structure of the moon, essentially proving the moon is solid, not hollow. So he is just completely wrong there. Everything else he says is either just true but irrelevant, or he's trying to spin it into some kind of a mystery or conspiracy, or it's just straight up wrong. Um, like he says, like all craters on the moon are the same depth. No, there aren't. There are bigger craters that are deeper, you know, than the, than the smaller, shallower craters. Depends on how much energy they were, the moon was struck with. So that's just not true. Um, but it is true that the far side of the moon is denser than the near side of the moon, and that's something that has, you know, a physical explanation, and that, that's the kind of thing that astronomers study. Uh, it has to do with the fact that the moon is tidally locked and how long it took for the, the crust to solidify, etc., um, so these are, you know, there are some anomalies that we learn when we study uh, other worlds like the moon or Mars or other things that, you know, that we can study. And these anomalies don't mean that there are aliens or that they're, it's constructed or hollow or something ridiculous like that. It, these are all things that scientists then explore to try to figure out what the, the answer is. And in this case, in all of the examples that he brings up, astronomers do have either 
very solid explanations or very plausible hypotheses. But, and one thing that we could then know to a very high degree of certainty is that the moon is not hollow. 